quite warm today. Weather is getting warmer. So the last time we started to talk about international advertising, um, we started to talk about the integrated marketing communications, which is making a uh, strategy which includes all of the different types of marketing. So they're all working together for the same goal and making synergies. <coughs> we talked about some sales promotions, which can be different in uh, different markets. So, uh, then let's talk about the public relations. What does public relations mean? PR for short, what does it mean? Public relations. Hmm? Appeal to the product of companies. <coughs> product has appeal. Mm. Not really. PR means that just we, 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 it's like our face, company's face, to the world. So there are PR companies also who help, like, do you know politicians? Yeah. Mm. Politician has some scandal, they might contact the PR person help them to control the scandal so they look better. Okay? PR is public relations, means company's face to the world. How does the company look to the world? So public relations is creating good relationships with the press and other media. So it's usually a good idea for the company to have a good relationship with the press. If we think about sports, for example, the football managers, they want to have good relationships with the press. Why? Do you understand the press? Yeah. Yeah. Why does the football manager want to have a good relationship with the press? What might happen if he has a bad relationship? <laughs> yes, they might say he's a terrible manager and he should be sacked, he should be fired, right? The journalists. Do you understand? If the manager has a good relationship, maybe the journalists don't write bad things. So the same for the companies. Companies don't want to have a lot of bad news about them in the press. So we have this example of Bridgestone and Firestone Tires. Do you know Bridgestone Tires? Yeah. Also Toyota. So they were making the tires in the US and they had some safety problem. And about 100 people died because of the safety problem. Okay. So they were a traditional Japanese company, so they thought what they need to do in the US is just to, you know, in Japan they do the bowing and saying I, I take the responsibility for the mistake, okay? But the US Congress was not interested in that much, right? They went to, do you understand the Senate in the US? Senate or Congress? How do you say Senate in Korean? Book way one. Hmm? So they went there and they just thought that it's okay just to bow down and say, I take responsibility, I'm sorry. But uh, that's like a hundred years ago used way in Japan, right? Traditional way, but it doesn't work well in the US. In the US, the Senate wants the action, right? They want the company to do something and compensate people and do all those things. Uh, so Bridgestone then they started to blame Ford because Ford company was using the Bridgestone tires. And they said Ford was telling their customers to deflate the tire. Do you understand deflate? Deflate means make less air in the tire. So because Ford told the customers to deflate the tire, Bridgestone said that's why there was a problem. Okay? And 
Basically, they made a mess of their PR in the US. Right? They did all the things wrong, and they got the very bad relationship in the US, and people stopped buying the Bridgestone tires. Okay? Toyota had a little bit similar situation. Toyota had some braking problem. And again, they just went there and bowed down to the Senate and said, we're sorry. But again, they didn't do the correct actions. Okay? And they didn't talk to the media properly. And Toyota had a problem. So the company needs to make the good international public relations, understanding the culture of the other countries, okay? and acting in the right way there, so that they have a good relationship with the public. So one way we can do this, some companies do that, is by sponsoring, corporate sponsorships. Which company sponsored the Olympics? Who sponsors the Olympics? Do you know? Which company sponsored the World Cup? Coca-Cola? Nike? Adidas? Why? What? Uh, Samsung sponsors the Chelsea soccer team, right? Uh, we have uh, baseball teams, and Korea is more popular, right? Every, even the companies have their own baseball team. So if we do the sponsorship in the different country, we can make a good relationship with the public. Okay? Sponsor the sports events. You understand what I mean by sponsoring? Paying the money, organizing that. That can have public relations. Building an international profile. And the standards in the workplace. We talked about the ISO standard. So Bridgestone didn't have the, Bridgestone didn't have the ISO 9000 quality standard. Okay, and then they were blaming forward. So first they should have had the standards. They have the standard and the stamp. It's a voluntary standard. You can make a better reputation and better public relations. Okay? We talked about before these days with the environment and those kind of things. company can make good public relations in the different countries. But different countries is different. Okay? We saw the Japanese approach. Public relations didn't work in the US. So we need to learn about how to make public relations in each country. Okay? We can use the public relations agency to help us also. <coughs> so when we're advertising internationally, we have to think about what is the function of advertising. It is to interpret or translate the qualities of the products or services in terms of the customer's needs, wants, desires, and aspirations. Do customers in different countries have the same needs, wants, desires, and aspirations for a camera? Camera? What do you think? What do you want from a camera? Discuss with your partner. If you're buying a camera, what do you, what do you want? What are your needs? What do you need? What do you want? What's your desire? What's your aspiration if you're buying a camera? What is high quality? That's the question. What is high quality for you? Lens. High quality lens. Anything else? Compact and portable. Anything else? How much does it weigh? Weight. Honest, what do you look for when you're buying a camera? Um, I look at megapixels. Megapixels, technical detail. Yes. Yeah, for the shot. 
the sharpness of the picture. Okay. So different people in different countries have different wants or desires for the camera, right? In Asia, people are more also more concerned about design, whereas in the UK, US people are not worried about the design of the camera. Okay? How does it look on the outside? Maybe in Korea, you might be concerned about the also the as you say the lens, that kind of thing, right? But the UK, they might be more concerned about the practicality. Is it practical? Does it break easily? It doesn't break easily. Okay. So when we are advertising internationally to the different people in the different countries, we have to make different type of advertisements, right? We have to stress, depending on the, per the person's uh, wants and needs, we have to consumer wants and needs, then we have to stress the different uh, parts that we need to do. Okay, so <laughs> emotional appeals, symbols and persuasive approaches should follow cultural norms. Okay, so uh, some countries we can't use a certain uh, symbol, right? It could be offensive in one country or not in the other country. How can we persuade people in one country compared to another country? It's different. Okay. <clears throat> so, in order to do this, we need to follow these steps. Perform the marketing research, like what, find out about, we discussed before, find out why do the people buy the product? What are their wants and needs in the product? We looked at the B2B questionnaire to find out those things. <coughs> you guys are doing this, right, for your project. Then we need to specify what's the goal of the communication. After we perform the research, we find out Korean students are very interested in the design. Okay? So a goal of our communication is to stress the design of the camera. It's very nice. Okay? Then develop the most effective message for the market segment. So colors, pictures, so on. Okay? Usually we don't use the same uh, advertisements in every country, right? You can change it a little bit if we need to give a different message. Select the effective media online or so on, we'll look at later, TV. Get the budget, execute the campaign, and then evaluate. Did we meet our goals? Is important at the end. So, we have some problems when we're doing this. We need to careful marketing research to find out exactly about that country and what they need. Okay? We need to be thoughtful and creative when we make our advertising campaign. We need to be careful about the self-reference criteria, that we don't just make the self-reference criteria. One example of this is uh, the car company made a car called Nova, right? But in Spanish, does anybody speak Spanish? What does Nova mean in Spanish? No means no, what does Va mean? Do you know? Go. Go, right? Who said go? How do you know? I learned the Spanish a little bit. You learned Spanish? Okay. So Nova means doesn't go in Spanish. Then they start to sell the car in Spain. <laughs> right? So they weren't very thoughtful and they didn't do careful marketing research, okay? So companies can make that kind of mistake, okay? Uh, these days, we said there's a trend that the customers are getting more localized, they want more customization. So we need even more sophisticated advertising strategy on the TV or magazine or newspaper or social media aimed specifically at those people in that market segment. Okay. And then we need to find the right balance between the standardization and customization we've talked about with Hyundai's case. Okay. Most companies will keep the logo the same. Okay. Uh, the name of the company, the logo the same. But they'll change the advertisement on the different, different companies. We looked at uh, the vodka, absolute vodka. Okay. So we have to, of course, the culture makes a big difference. Another example is bicycles. In some countries, maybe Vietnam, bicycle is transportation, used for transportation, getting to work every day. Okay? But in the US, people don't really use bicycles for transportation. 
the bicycle is a recreation vehicle. Okay? So the bicycle is different in the different culture. Okay? Different need, different task. So we have to change the advertising like that. Okay? In the US, we're going to show the advertising of the person enjoying the fun time with their bicycle on the mountain or something like that. Okay? In Vietnam, we're going to show the person going to work on their bicycle. So think about the different culture and the different consumers' cultures. So as we said, the different cultures usually agree on the primary function. Usually, but not always. For example, the Big Mac, right? Primary function, Big Mac, is uh, eat the beef burger, right? But in India, it's vegetable. So other features and psychological attributes of the item can have significant differences. We talked about cameras. Uh, yogurt. Some people think yogurt is like a health food. What do you think in Korea? How do you see yogurt? What do you think about yogurt? Health food? If you, do you eat yogurt as a health food? Some people think yogurt is like bad for you, bad food, because it has too much sugar and fat. Okay? Yogurt is like treat or dessert. Okay? So, uh, usually in Europe, there is a yogurt company, maybe you don't know Danone. Do you know Danone? Yes. They advertise like the scientific fact, like it has this bacteria in the yogurt, which is good for your stomach. Okay? They do that kind of healthy advertising. So their customers are worried about, they think yogurt is healthy, right? They eat yogurt not because it's a treat, also because it's a healthy food, health food. So they advertise according to the science with somebody in the white coat and the glasses, right? It's a very official scientist who says, oh, this bacteria is good for your stomach, right? Then the people say, oh, yogurt is good for me, I'll eat more, right? But in other country, people think yogurt is a treat, then we'll show the lux luxury setting for the yogurt, right? Maybe the, do you know Ferrero Rocher? Yeah. Like, the ambassador is having a party, right? We're serving yogurt at the party with the ambassador. <laughs> ambassador, would you like some yogurt? Yes. <laughs> I'll have some yogurt, please, right? Then yogurt is like a luxury and... Uh, Right, but it could be the same product, okay? but different advertising. Because the people has the different idea about the product. What about almonds? What do you think about almonds in Korea? Healthy. healthy. How often do you eat almonds? Hmm? It's quite expensive. Expensive? Rarely eaten? Yeah, rarely eaten. It's healthy. Why do you eat almonds in Korea? Because it's delicious. Does it taste good? Yeah. Right, so uh, in the U.S. they eat almonds very often. Some people eat every day, right? They make the marketing campaign in, in the U.S. It's a cheaper price. So they made the marketing campaign with the farmer in a, in a field full of almonds. Like, we have too many almonds, okay? So he's like saying that kind of thing. We have too many almonds. So please buy the almonds every day. Okay, so people should buy the almonds in the US as a daily snack. Okay? But in Korea, again, they're going to advertise differently. People don't eat as a daily snack. Okay? So make a different type of advertising for Blue Diamond. So even that's a very simple product, just almonds. Okay? Almonds is a very simple product. But they have different marketing for every country. Okay? Even their US marketing didn't work in Canada. Canadians thought it was silly to see the farmer in the field full of almonds, Canadians thought, oh, that's just silly. They weren't interested in that advertising. So they had, and they didn't like, it was a US farmer. Because the Canadians had some issue with the US. Canadians preferred to buy from Canadian farmers than US farmers. So they, they used the same advertisement in Canada, and you would think Canada is right next to the US, should be okay, right? But it wasn't okay, it didn't work. So they, almond company, they even had to change their TV advertisement for Canadian markets. Instead, put a Canadian farmer. And don't put all the almonds in the field. Canadians just thought that idea was silly. So they, just, they say that they need a different marketing approach and different strategy for every country. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> so let's just discuss with our partner group. So you can change your seat to sit next to your group. So we're going to just discuss with our group for five minutes. So, we are going to discuss about this, right? Different cultures, uh, they have different ideas about the items, and we may need a different advertising, change to advertising, right? So discuss with your partner, how are you going to do the advertising? Just think about how do people see the product differently, and how does that mean you're going to change your advertising, advertising strategy? TV advertising, or radio advertising, or magazine advertising, okay? So what do people think differently about your product? Here we wrote cameras, yogurt, and almonds, so your product, right?
In Europe, we have uh, each country has quite different culture in Europe. Okay, uh, but we can make cost savings by having the same theme in the promotional packaging and design. So we try to make the best mix of customizing what we need to customize and standardizing what we can standardize. In Europe. Legal restrictions are slowly being eliminated. So when we sell something in Europe, there are some different laws, but slowly it's getting better. That the laws are getting more uh, standard. So we also have some legal constraints for advertising. Okay? Different countries have different laws on advertising, so we need to check all their laws about these things. Uh, do you understand comparative advertising? Comparative advertising. Some countries allow that, some countries don't allow that. Okay, you say my product against this product. Okay, my product is faster than this product or slower than this product. Okay, advertising of specific products, like we said, uh, you know, cigarettes or alcohol. There's a lot of laws. If you want to sell alcohol in Ireland, you can't have the advertisement with anybody in their twenties. People drinking the alcohol has to be at least in their 30s in the advertisements. Okay? The advertisement has to be after 9 or 10 o'clock. It can't be on during the sports event. It used to be that at the break time of the sports event, they had a lot of advertisements for alcohol. But nowadays, you're not allowed to advertise the alcohol during the sports event. Okay? So a lot of those kind of restrictions. Right? Cigarettes can't be advertised at all in most countries. Right? No advertisement anywhere. Okay. Uh, the control of advertising on the TV. So some countries have the uh, different length of advertising, right? And we see here the same limitations on the length of number of commercials. The US they have very long commercials, right? Uh, some in Italy you have to buy. For example, the advertisement for the long term. In other countries, you can buy just one or two advertisements, short term. So you have to think about every country. Can, what can we do with the TV advertising? Okay? Uh, accessibility to the broadcast media. So again, is it affordable? Some countries, it's like five or ten times the price to advertise on the TV. Okay. In China, what does everybody watch on the TV in China? What program does everybody watch? Huh? What do you think is the most popular program in China? Six o'clock news, right? So according to the statistics, maybe the six o'clock news, who's the national broadcaster of the six o'clock news? Who's the biggest broadcaster in Korea? CCTV? CCTV. Yeah, so let's say the 6 o'clock news on CCTV, if you want to buy just a few seconds, it's going to cost like a million dollars, right? That kind of thing. So we have to think about cost of the uh, media. Is it too expensive or not? But if you pay your million dollars just for a few seconds, how many people are you going to reach that's watching the 6 o'clock news in China? How many people will find out about your product? What do you think? Have a guess at the number. There's 1.5 billion people in China, right? So let's say half of them watch the news or less, still 500 billion people just learned about your, your new product, okay? Uh, internet service, do people use the internet? Of course in Korea, advertising on the internet is Fine, we are going to talk about that more later. We're going to do a case study, right? But some countries, they don't use the internet, or the age group don't use the internet. They don't have good internet service, okay? Uh, we can have special taxes on advertising in different countries. Uh, ling linguistic limitations, we talked about with market research, but also advertising. Does humor translate? Does humor translate well? Humor? No, not really. No, right? You can make an advertisement which is quite funny in one country, and you show it in another country, it's not funny. 
Okay? So usually the US is like that. The US company, they make the advertising for, for the US. Comedy in the US is very obvious. You watch the US sitcom, it's very easy to understand what's funny. It's really obvious, right? It's like they hit you in the face with comedy. Okay? But in Britain, they don't like that kind of comedy. They like some sarcasm or very hard to understand the comedy. Okay? So US advertisement doesn't work in Britain because they can't translate. I, when I was in the US, I looked at the advertisement. I said, that's not funny. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not, I don't understand. Why would they? Why? Do you understand what I mean? Yes. So even though they use the same language, they have different culture about humor. Humor doesn't translate. So usually we don't try to directly translate some joke or humor situation from one country to another country. Uh, then we have the just general translation challenge to get the message across. Many countries have the low literacy rate, so they don't understand well. Okay? India has so many different languages. Okay? So in order to solve this problem, we need to test in country. So you show me the US advertisement and I say that's not funny, and then the US guys say, Okay, get rid of the advertisement, right? No, we gotta change it, guys. We gotta change it. <laughs> what kind of way? It doesn't work. Right? I lived in Canada for three months. So it's more Canadian. <laughs> Canadian type accent. Right? Do you understand me better if I speak like Canadian? <laughs> Do you want me to speak like a Canadian all the time? <laughs> I can be really happy and speak like pretend to be a Canadian. What do you think? Do you want me to teach like a happy Canadian? Yes or no? Can't change my name to Brad. I can be Brad the happy Canadian. No? Yes? No. Maybe some people want me to change to Brad. I can do that if you want. It's fine like that. It's okay? It's okay. Just a bit Irish. Yeah, it's too much. Who was in Canada before? Is that a good Canadian? Sounds like people in Canada? Yes? If you watch South Park, people talk like that on South Park. So we need to test uh, first with the people to see if the advertisement works or not. Okay. So we also have the media limitations in different countries. Some countries they don't have good printing presses. They don't have good quality to make the type of digital colors that we want to make. They don't have good enough paper. Okay. So we're talking about emerging economies. So we have to decide about uh, all of these things when we're making the tactical, do you understand tactics, tactical consideration? So we have to think about all of these things when we're deciding about how to advertise. So availability of the advertising space, the cost, the coverage, how many people, how many people does it reach? Okay. Uh, we talked about the coverage in China. What do you think is the best way to get the best coverage in China? For advertising, Chinese students. Do you understand coverage? To reach the most people. What's the best way to reach the most people in China? Oh, TV. TV. Uh, internet, and also we have kind of a chatting program that's called a WeChat. WeChat? So that, that you can reach almost all Chinese people. Do, can you advertise on WeChat? Yeah, because uh, Facebook is forbidden in China, so a lot of Chinese people, they use WeChat. Okay, so social media, yeah. Do, many, do you think a lot of people in China have internet connection and use the social media? Yes. Or just as younger people? Uh, older people, of course, and some they even don't know how to use a smartphone. Mm. Uh, so if we want to reach young people with some product, okay. What about in South Africa? What has good coverage in South Africa? Internet, like 50% of it. About 50%? Well, 50%. Mm. 
newspapers as well. What about Kazakhstan? The same TV. Mm. TV. Yeah, you watch the news. National broadcaster. Mm. Do you have a national newspaper which yeah. everybody reads? The same newspaper. Okay, so it depends on the countries. In Korea, does everybody read the same newspaper? Do you have a national newspaper? No. You have, two, you have a lot of different newspapers. It's yeah. not that much coverage on one newspaper, right? In Ireland, we just have two, really, two newspapers. Okay. So, and then there's a newspaper for the city. So you can also for the city. Okay? Uh, we have to think about the market data. We'll talk about it later in the uh, case on the social media and internet advertising, but an important thing is to be able to evaluate our advertising. We spent this much money on advertising, <coughs> what's the result? Can we link how the advertising is turning into uh, sales or not? So we just mentioned newspapers, magazines, do you guys read magazines these days? No. Not at all? Why not? When I was younger, a lot of people bought magazines every week, especially mm -hmm. girls bought fashion magazines. You really didn't have cell phones. No, they didn't have cell phones, so they were bored, so they had to read magazines. <laughs> <laughs> Where, what kind of product do you think might advertise in magazines? Might be useful. Mm -hmm. Hmm? What kind of product would be useful to advertise in a magazine? Clothes. Clothes. Dolls. Cosmetics. Cosmetics in the fashion, right? So we have a very targeted. We want to target a specific market. So usually the niche market is good for magazines, right? Like we're selling some niche product for cars, right? Like special light for the car or special decoration for the car. Then we can advertise in the magazine, car magazines, right? Auto magazines. So we have a very specific product. We just want to we make a kind of tactic, right? Uh, radio and TV, uh, direct mail, you can mail to people. We'll talk about this in the case study, internet and social media. Okay? So this is just generally, we have to, kind of general marketing, we need to think what's the best way to market. But different countries have different right, situations. So advertising TV is fine in one country. In another country it might be too expensive. Okay? Or there's too many restrictions on the law, so we need to find another way. So, uh, in some emerging economies where it's hard to reach the people through these ways, right? Uh, one company, uh, maybe Unilever, they went around the countryside. They made a kind of a play. Do you understand play? Do you like plays? Do you go to see plays? No. No? Why not? <laughs> You're too young to see plays? Hmm? So anyway, they, do you know, like Punch and Judy? Do you know Punch and Judy? They hit puppets? Uh, they hit each other? You don't know Punch and Judy? No. Huh? No. Every ch children in the world should know Punch and Judy. Probably you know about different name. Where the candy is inside? Hmm? Candy is inside. I've never. You never saw this, pu this puppet shop? Ah, yeah. hmm? It's not in Korea. Not in Korea, there's a crocodile and a show in the kids' <laughs> yeah. country. What? Borrow. What borrow? Yeah. So anyway, they went around with this kind of puppet shop. And uh, they, usually the puppet is fighting and that kind of thing, right? But they were fighting about the washing. And then in the end they got the Unilever product. So they can do the washing. Everybody's happy, right? That was their marketing idea. So they had this kind of play, just one person doing the puppet show. They went around to the villages. In the emerging economy in Africa, they went around to the different villages. And had the puppet show and showed them the product. That was their advertising, okay? Because uh, it was hard to reach the people through the normal advertising way. So it depends on the country we go to. The, we have to change our advertising strategy. Find a new way to do uh, advertising. Uh, we can also get advertising agencies. So we can just go to a country and hire the agency. 
to do the advertising for us. Okay? We can have the domestic agency from the country or a multinational agency with local branches. Com compensation is usually about 15, it costs about 15% of the revenues. Right? So let's have a look at some of the agencies. Um, you can tell me you, if, what you think about the advertisements. You can look at some advertisements. So these are the top 10 global advertising agencies who are helping the companies with uh, advertising. <clears throat> Let me turn off the ad block. Do you know Adblock? Yes. So this is a research of... <laughs> Why are you laughing? That's not funny. It's too obvious. American humor. <laughs> Don't laugh, it's not funny. <laughs> Do Koreans like American humor? More than British humor? That guy is funny. So, they have 1,850 uh, CMOs, not CEOs, CMO marketing, and other marketing executives about the ad agencies <laughs> via online multiple choice survey. Okay? So they uh, asked them which was the best agency. So Winston, Whedon and Kennedy was the favorite agency. This agency creates the advertising for Old Spice, Coke, ESPN and Nike. So <coughs> Nike paid them money, right? Or Old Spice paid them money to create their advertisement. Okay? Do you want to watch the advertisement? Yes, yes, of course. Just an example, the US advertisement. Do you think that advertisement can work well in Korea? Hmm? Anyway, the agency has to make the advertisement for Korea. Are they going to make this, that same advertisement for Korea? Oh, probably you don't know who the guy is, right? I guess the guy is a famous American football player. Looks like a famous no. American football player. He's an actor. 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 He's an actor? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Who is he then? What's his name? Terry Crews. Terry Crews, what does he act in? Um, used to be in um, Everybody Hates Chris and it was a Sid Trump's used to play with Friday. Series. And uh, <laughs> uh, The Expendables 3. Mm. Um, yes, I never watched that program Everybody Hates Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know which. I didn't like the name, right? <laughs> I don't know the actor. <laughs> but he, he was also in the Expendables, mm. and there are some other movies I've got. Okay, so he's not going to work, right? So they're going to have Kim Yong Na or Sai, right? Doing something. Who's the most popular advertising actor in Korea? For the moment, Song Joon Lee. Song Joon Lee. Song Joon Ki. Song Joon Ki, the guy with the glasses. A forty-year-old guy. I was in the in the military. Do you know Taehyung and Wit? No, no. It's a famous series. Okay, so it's not going to work on me. <laughs> so, uh, if you want, you can look at yourself later. You can look at these uh, uh, different agencies. Okay, but. The interesting thing about this article is it talks about that the main point 
for the CMO these days is integrated marketing communications. Okay? So integrated marketing communications has, has turned into the area of the greatest importance to the CMOs. They want to seek a holistic approach to engage customers. Holistic approach means everything is joined together, right? Everything is working together. So 68% of their respondents said integrating marketing communications was more important than effective advertising. Okay? So having the same type of advertising for public relations, for TV, for newspaper, for magazines, for internet, all integrated is the most important thing. Skill of the agency that uh, CMOs, that's why they choose the uh, agency. Okay? So, uh, other important things is accountability. Do you understand accountability? Yes. So, accountability we're going to talk about later. Advertising needs to drive business. So they need to be able to show how is the advertising increasing business, right? That's one problem with Facebook. We could do something on Facebook, but it's hard to show. Did that have, how many new customers did we have because of that advertisement on Facebook? Okay. Uh, efficiency. What does efficiency mean? You should understand that word in English. Are you efficient? What does efficient mean? Low cost, high. Low cost of what? Low cost in time and money, but good performance, right? So it doesn't cost much, so cheap, not much time, and uh, good performance. Okay. So uh, these days, they say that the agencies are having trouble with the digital age. Okay, because uh, that's one reason we're going to study about the digital marketing. Okay, because some of the agencies they have old white men like me, right? Am I old? <laughs> Huh? Why did, you're supposed not. to say, no, you're not old. <laughs> and you get, hey, hey, great, right? <laughs> yeah. Too slow. <laughs> you missed your chance. All right? So, just old white men, maybe 10 years older than me, or more, right? And they don't understand the digital age as well, okay? So these days, some agency that understands the digital marketing, and integrating the digital marketing with their TV marketing is doing well. But the old white guys are too slow. They're not adapting quickly enough okay, to the new uh, digital marketing because people are spending more of their time online. These days, do you spend more time online or watching TV? Online. online. How much more online than watching TV? 90 to 10. 90 to 10? Maybe zero. Maybe zero. Online. Yes. Why would you're not going to watch Korean TV, right? <laughs> so it's going to be zero, right? So then uh, the companies have to adapt to make more digital marketing in that case to reach the young people. Okay? So uh, these are, you can read this whole article yourself, as I say. Okay? So it just stresses the importance of the accountability and the integrated marketing. <coughs> and the new trend of digital marketing. Okay? So let's take a break there for 10 minutes.